हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल्स कॉल्ड क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ रेस अंडर पेपर फिजिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी इन दिस पेपर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट हिस्ट्री ऑफ डिफाइनिंग रेस जेनेटिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ रेस स्टेटमेंट ऑफ रेस बाय अमेरिकन एंथ्रोपोलॉजिकल एसोसिएशन एंथ्रोपोलॉजिस्ट डिवीजन ऑफ ह्यूमन रेस एंड रेशियल एलिमेंट इन इंडिया बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्क्रिप्शन लेट मी गिव यू एन इंट्रोडक्टरी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट अबाउट रेस द वर्ल्ड रेस हैज बीन वेरियसली ट्रेस टू द लेटिन रेशियो आर रेडिक्स आर रूट to the to the herb you for 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 head or origin johnson definition of race in the in the era in the year of 1750 55 first edition of a dictionary of the english language are a family ascendancy or a family descendancy or a generation a collective family and a particular breed while tracing the origin in the 19th century he states that no edition of either webster's or chambers dictionary define race in a modern way despite the popularity of this term in in victorian science and ethnography finally in the first edition of the oxford english book volume 8 1910 the definition of race describe the term as a group of several tribes or people forming a distinct ethnic stock and one of the great division of mankind having certain peculiarity in common later on race has been defined by hutton as a great division of mankind a member of which do individually varying are characterized as as a group by certain combination of morphological and metrical features principally and non adoptive which have been derived from their common descent montague in 1942 has has defined a race as an ethnic group as representing one of the number of a population comprising the single species homo sapiens which individually maintain their differences physically and culturally physically and culturally by means of isolating mechanisms such as geographic and social barrier the term race is used in various sense even by human biologists today despite of the fact that race is not a useful tool for classification but to understand the human differences and diversity is still remain a practice and thus present a contradiction as how can we study human differences without talking about race ostrilords now let's discuss about the ostrilords the ostrilords include two main groups one is the australian australian aboriginals and second is the pre dravidian this pre dravidian is also called as australoids or vedoid they are still they are they are they are they are, are small this people of this australoid they are small statured people they are average with average average height of about 165 cm for the australian aboriginals and little bit smaller than that it is about 157 for the vedoid or the pre dravidian the australian aboriginals have a skin color varying from medium to dark chocolate brown color and their hair form is curly sometimes wavy and rarely straight so it is curly or wavy and the color is from medium brown to black so they are more or less black in color almost brown to black in color whereas in the case of vedoids or pre dravidians or australoid of malaya peninsula they have a skin color varying from yellowish to dark brown see the difference here it is yellowish to dark brown over there it is brown to black 
Here color is black with reddish tinge. Over there it is brownish tinge, which is wavy. Wavy is more or less same in both or curly. Their head is mesocephalic and nose is of medium breadth and flat. That is mesorhine approaching towards a platyrhine. The Australian Aboriginals have a very has has a very platyrhine nose with a marked depressed nasal root. Their head is usually doligocephalic, and the brow ridges are extremely large, and the forehead is receding. Their face is short, showing medium to pronounced prognathism. Lips are full, and the chins are receding. Whereas in the case of pre-Davidian or Vedoid or Ashloid, they have an orthognathous face. Lips are of medium thickness and chin is somewhat weak. This mainly they were mainly inhabited inhabitant in Australia, Melanesia, Philippines, Malaya Peninsula, and Andaman Island. Even we have seen their presence in South and central part of India. Beginning in the 1930s, advances in population genetic and evolutionary biology led many to conclude that the race concept was not a particularly useful or accurate marker of uh, biological differences. Explanation for racial differences based on measurable and observable physical trait such as cranial capacity and skin color, it gave way to a whole new way of thinking about the subject since the beginning of the 20th century. Ultimately, race came to be understood as a reflection of unseen differences that the scientists of the same attributed to the recently discovered factors of heredity, heredity called genes. Montagu has given the genetical definition of a race as a population with differences which, which, which differs in the, in the frequency of gene or genes, which is actually exchanging or capable of exchanging genes across whatever boundaries separate it from other population of the species. Race could also be defined anthropologically as a, a population characterized by some conception relative as to the as to the frequency of frequency and distribution of genes or physical characters which appear fluting, fluting and often disappear in the course of time by means of geographical or cultural isolation. Many prominent biologists by 1970s including the genetist Richard Leonington and Cavellis view the concept of race as a deeply flawed, a way, a flawed way to organize human diversity that is inseparable, inseparable from the prejudice about human differences that spawned the concept in the 18th century. Ni nee and Roy Chaudhary using gene frequency have prepared a, a phylogenetic tree for 26 representative human population from around the world and found consistent with the traditional racial division and subdivision, thus providing genetic proof that race is real and that the tradition, traditional racial classification are accurate. The American Anthropological Association in their statement of race says physical variation in any given trait tend to occur gradually rather than abruptly over geographic areas. Since physical traits are inherited independently of one another, the presence of a varied range of traits does not predict the presence of other traits. There is a variation in the skin color from light in the temperate areas in the north to the dark in the tropical area in the south. Its intensity is not related to hair texture or nose shape. Dark skin color may be associated with frizzy or kinky hair or curly or wavy or straight hair, all of which are found among different indigenous population in tropical areas. These facts 
make any attempt to establish lines of division among biological population as both arbitrary and subjective. Biological distinctiveness is also emphasized in the Cambridge Encyclopedia stating race as a biologically distinct human group. Biological differences result because of the isolation between breeding population, but there have been few isolated human groups in the world today. The racial classification typically emphasized superficially obvious features such as skin color or hair type, but other, other traits which are transmitted genetically are also dealt with. These are like blood groups or differences in inherited enzymes deficiency which are more precisely measurable and tend to cross cut the cultural categories. With the interaction of genetic dispositions and environment produce local physical traits for example there are clear correlation between body proportion and climate variation. Scholars have assumed that biological race could be clearly demarcated and that the and that the racial group would vary not only in skin color, skull shape and so on, but also in, in intelligence and even in, in, in personality. Despite many attempts to establish such correlation, there seems to be no evidence that biological differences between population have any relationship to variation in, in ability or character or with any cultural institutions. All races are currently classified by anthropologists or biologists as belongs to the one species, that is Homo sapiens. All races of mankind in the world can interbreed because they have no much, no so much in common. All races share 99.99% plus percent of the same genetic material, which means that division of race are largely subjective. A number of racial classification of human population have been given, but at the same time there seems to be no agreement about this classification. The anthropologists usually divide human beings into, into races like, like the, we can say that Caucasoid, Negroid, Mongoloid and Australoid. This division is usually on the basis of origin and the variation found among them. Uh, but again, clear-cut demarcat demarcating line does not exist and there are always intermediate type possessing combination of characteristics. So, every race has some overlapping traits that is usual raci class racial classification is done on the basis of variation found among the living people and among their ancestors having a common origin. But it is very difficult to draw line between the races as every race overlap each other with some intermediate type. Though anthropologists usually divide human beings into three major races, Caucasoid, Negroid and Mongoloid, many have considered two more groups that is Amerind and Australoid or Oceanian. A number of racial classification of human population have been given or classified explained but at the same time there seems to be no agreement about this 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 classification the anthropologists generally are mostly divide human being into races like caucasoid negroid mongoloid american indian or amerindians dravidians and even sometimes they used to include Australoid also, but mostly it is divided into five category that is Dravidian, Mongoloid, Negroid, Caucasoid and Amery Indians. This figure explains the distribution of different racial group and the encircled area explain the distribution of a specific racial group into each 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 circle zone like if you see from the North America top part of this uh, North American continent, we can see at certain region we can see the Mongoloid, lower part we can see Caucasoid, then further lower part we see Negroid. In the both American Indians as well as in the Pacific region we can see Polynesian, 
Negroid even in the African regions. We can see the smart coccosoid region in the South American regions. Similarly, in the Madagascar region, we have we can see the distribution. We can see the Dravidians in the Indian regions, then Mongoloid region on the top of that. Even the Melanesian part, we can see the distribution of different racial groups. We can also this 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 clearly highlight the 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 Caucasoid distribution in the Australoid region. So overall, the distribution of several racial groups and their dominance is reflected by different colors and different uh, the darkness as well as well as shadiness of the color explain their their distribution in the world horizon field. Caucasoid. Caucasoids are inhabitants of Europe, America, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, West Asia, South Asia, and part of Central Asia. They are mainly indicated by American Indians, American uh, White American, White Australian, White New Zealandian, White South African, and so on. They are usually medium to tall in stature with a skin color which varies from light reddish white to olive brown. Some are brown as well. The head hair is light to bl light blonde to dark brown in color. It is fine to medium in, in texture and straight to wavy in form. They have a moderate to profuse qual uh, quantity of body hair. Head form range from broad that is uh, brachycephalic to a long doligocephalic. They have a narrow to medium broad face. Jaw is not projecting forward that is prognathism is not present. They have a laptorine to mesorine nose with a high nasal bridge. Lips are thin to medium and the color of their eyes is usually lighter shades ranging from light blue to dark brown. They are relatively high incidence of A2 with highest frequency of RS negative. They are, they are the head, head hair is light bond to dark brown in color. They are they are usually medium to tall in stature. Negroids. Negroids are divided into African Negroids and Oceanic Negroids. They are the inhabitants of Africa, America, New Guinea and the neighboring Iceland. Andaman Iceland, Malaya Peninsula, East Sumatra and Philippines Iceland. Their height range from very short to tall with a skin color which is dark brown to black. Some are yellow brown. As their height range range from very short to tall with a skin color which is dark or brown or black. Some of them wear even, even yellowish brownish. The head hair is dark brown to black in color which is which is in coarse in texture and curly to frizzy or only in form. Body hair is slight in quantity. The head form is predominantly doligocephalic with protruding occipit and a rounded face. Face is medium broad to narrow. Prognathism is very often present. Their nose is platyrine and the bridge and the root is usually low and broad. They, the lips are thick and everted. The color of their eyes is dark brown to, to black. Mongoloids are the inhabitants of China, Mongolia, Tibet, Siberia, North America, Greenland, Burma, Thailand, Malaya Peninsula, Philippines, Japan and Northeast India. They are medium to short in stature. Their skin color range from yellow to yellow brown, sometimes reddish brown. The hair is coarse in texture, straight in form and brown to brown black in color. They have a sparsely distributed body hair as they are medium to short in stature and their skin color is yellow brown in and their hair is coarse in texture. Their eyes are brown to dark brown in color. The eyes are oblique with a narrow slit like opening and mongoloid eye fold is often present. 
they have a medium broad to very broad face form with high and flat cheek bones their head form is predominantly brachycephalic with a medium head height the nose is mesorine to platyrine the bridge is usually low to medium cheek bones are high and flat the lips are thin Australoids are mainly inhabitant in Australia, Melanesia, Philippines, Malaya Peninsula, Andaman Island and South and Central India. They include two main groups. This is that is Australian Aboriginals and Pre-Davidian. They are small in stature people and average height about 165 cm. They have a skin color varying from medium to dark chocolate brown color. They are sometimes the color is from medium medium brown to black. Their head is mesocephalic, nose is medium breadth and flat. They are having platyrine nose. Head is usually doligocephalic and the brow ridges are extremely large and forehead is receding. They have a, so, a short face. Lips are full and the chin is receding and their lips are of medium thickness and chin is somewhat weak mainly distributed in the australian iceland somewhere sometime in the melanesia and the philippines region also we have seen their presence even in south and central india racial element in india the racial classification of Indian population was attempted first by Sir Herbert Richley and finding published in a book, The People of India. The list of various classifications given on the people of Indian by different authors are as follows. First, Richley classification, 1915. Then, Gofrida Ragaris classification, 1921. Then Haddon's classification 1925, then Ixtid classification 1934 and 1952, then Guha's classification 1935 and then 1937, Roy's classification 1934 to 38, Sarkar's classification 1958, Baisut's classification 1959, then Roginskiji. And Levin's classification 1963, then Bauchi's classification 1968, and the last one is Bowley's classification in 1977. All the classifications are important and noteworthy. Of all these, some are given below. Classification of Gaufrida and Ruggeri. Ruggeri. Ruggeri found the following ethnic stratification in India like Negritos, Pre-Dravidians, it is also called as Australoid Vedyad, it includes Santal, Ho, Munda, etc. Then Dravidians, Dravidians have affinity with Homo, Indian, Africans, Ethiopithecus, they are Tamil and Telugu speaking people. Then Tall, Doligocephalic, they are also called as Mesocephalic. It includes Toda, next one is Doligocephalic group, Doligocephalic Aryans, it includes Homo, Indo-European, Doligomorphous, next is Brachycephalic, Leucodom, it is also called as Homo, Indo-Europeans, Brachymorphous. Classification of A.C. Haddon, Haddon has divided Indian into three main geographical region that is the Himalayas, the northern plain or the Hindustan and the southern play, plateau, the Deccan and has dealt with the racial elements in each of these regions separately, Deccan. Hudden has observed the following racial element in this region. First, Negrito. A Negrito element is suspected among the some particularly like the Kadir, Kadirs, then Pre-Dravidian. Dravidians and Southern Brachycephalis and Western Brachycephalis. 
the western brachycephalus they are occupying the region extending from gujarat to kurg along the western coast they are the cytodravidians of risle they have a brachycephalic head almost lactorine nose light brown complexion and tall stature the examples are nagar brahmins of gujarat the prabhu etc next one is the hindustan racial element the indo afghan appear to be the predominant type in this region they are characterized by doligocephalic head finely cut straight or convex prominent nose long face regular features like medium to tall stature dark eyes light brown complexion and black wavy hair the typical representatives are jats and rajput in some places the, mem the members of indo african type has mixed with the aboriginal people the intermixture is more apparent in the lower caste people next is the himalayas group hadden observed the following racial element in the himalayan region like indo african or indo afghan sorry indo afghan that is represented by the balti another in indo afghan example the kanits of kullu valley they exhibit a traces of tibetan blood among them next is mongoloid this is dominated element in nepal bhutan and sikkim in assam he observed the following racial element like doligocephalic platyrine type it is also called as predravidian then doligocephalic mesorine type called as nesiot element then mesocephalic platyrine type it is seen among the khasis then mesocephalic mesorine type next type is brachycephalic lactorine came from the north and is related to euro asiatic group next is brachycephalic platyrine this is a variety of uh, periorian periorian last one is doligocephalic leptorine it was found in india classification of ichistid ichistid classified the population of india into four main division namely first we did are ancient indians they are the primitive people and they live in jungles they are again divided into first gondid that is skin color dark brown hair curly matriarchal influence is seen among them they use matok totemistic belief among them is noteworthy example bhil orangs gonds next one is malid skin color is dark brown hair curly people with ancient culture though a foreign influence is observed example kurumbar vedda second type is milanid or black indian racially they form a mixed group they are divided into southern milanid kolid southern milanid they are live in the south most plain of india matriarchal influence is marked their skin color is black example janadi then kolid they are found in the north deccan forest they have a strong totemistic belief matriarchal influence is observed skin color is black brown example munda and ho next group is indeed or new indians they are culturally advanced people having finer physical characteristics their division are gracile indeed or north indeed gracile indeed the skin color is brown they have a gracile appearance they are patri patriarchal people example bengalis north indeed skin color is light brown patriarchal people example rajput todas the last one is paleo mongoloid example palayam from wynod now let's try to discuss about the classification given by h h risle risle divided the people of india into the following categories he excluded the negritos of america andaman iceland as they had according to him little to do with the people of india 
फर्स्ट वन इज द टर्को इरानियन द टर्को इरानियन हैज ए ब्रॉड हेड एंड फाइन टू मीडियम नोज विच इज लॉन्ग एंड प्रोमिनेंट दे आर फेयरली टॉल द एवरेज स्टेज इज वेरिंग स्टेचर इज वेरिंग फ्रॉम वन सिक्सटी टू सेंटीमीटर टू वन सेवेंटी टू सेंटीमीटर दे हैव ए प्लेंटीफुल हेयर ऑन द फेस देयर आईज आर जनरली डार्क दो ग्रे आईज आर ऑल्सो नॉट अनकॉमन एंड द कॉम्प्लेक्शन इज फेयर दिस पीपुल लिव इन द बलूचिस्तान एजेंसी एंड 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 फ्रंटियर प्रोविंसेस विच आर नाउ इन इन पाकिस्तान द टाइप इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय बलूचीज द अफगानीज एक्सेट्रा रिसले सजेस्टेड दैट दिस टाइप वॉज फॉर्म्ड एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ ए मिक्सचर ऑफ टर्क एंड पर्शियन second is indo aryan they have a long head and this is characterized character their characters they markedly differ from from the turco iranian as the nose is long narrow and prominent complexion is fair eyes have a dark color they have a plentiful facial hair they are tall statured people this type is found to predominant in rajputana the punjab region and the value of valley of valley of kashmiris like the jats the khatris are some of the example of this group third one is saito dravidian this types has a medium to broad head modified nose fair complexion scanty hair on face and body they are medium statured in human being they differ from the turco iranian in having larger head flatter face higher nose and shorter stature this type is the result of an an result of an intermixture of two distinct racial element that is scythian and dravidian they are distributed in the region extended from gujarat to kurg the dravidian elements are more prominent in this in in in, in the socially socially lower group of this regions while the scythian element predominant among the higher group of the people fourth one is the aryo dravidian which is also called as hindustan time hindustan type their heads are long with with a tendency towards modified nose is generally medium but broad nose are also known not very it's more or less looked at looked at that the skin color is also variable it varies from light brown to dark color stature range from 159 to 166 cm thus they are differentiated from the indo aryan in the shorter and broader nose this type is found in the uttar pradesh rajputana and bihar as the name implies this type is a result of intermixing of two distinct racial type that is the aryan in the male and dravidian in the female female line fifth one is the mongolo dravidian it is also called as bengali type the member of this type has a as a broad head with a tendency to medium to to medium and medium nose which tend towards broad in some cases skin color in this case is dark with plenty full facial hair stature is generally medium but short also occur quite frequently they inhabitant bengal and odisha region some of the representative of these types are are bengali brahmins bengali kshatri etc they differ from aryo uh, aryo dravidians and indo aryans in having broader head richly suggested an intermixing of mongolian and the dravidians in this type to which some indo aryan strains were also added sixth one is the mongoloid type in the mongoloid type head is generally broad nose shows a wide range of variation being fine to broad stature is short or below medium they have a characteristic broad mongolian face with oblique eyes showing epicanthic fold skin color is dark with yellowish tinge hair on the face and the body is scanty this type of 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 human being is found in assam or northeastern region nepal and burma last is the dravidian they are the short statured people head is long nose is very broad and sometime a depression is seen at the root of the nose skin color is very dark eyes also had a dark color hair is also dark 
it is plentiful and occasionally it tend to curl. They are found in the region extended from Silong to the Ganga, covering the whole of southeastern India, Madras, Hyderabad, Central Provinces, and Chota Nagpur region. Risley classification had a, a face considerable criteria from different authorities, especially in respect to Dravidian, Cytho-Dravidian, and Mangalore. Dravidian. Classification of B.S. Guha. B.S. Guha has found the following racial element which have entered into the population of India. First, the Negrito. They are considered to be the first comers and the true or true inhabitant of India. Their physical characteristics are head is small, it is round, medium or long, nose is straight, flat and broad, stretcher is very short or pygmy stretcher, skin color is dark brown to dark, hair is woolly, forehead is bulbous, supraorbital ridges are smooth. This type is represented by Kadars, Irula and primitive tribe of Maynard. In respect of the head form and hair structure, the Indian Negritos are more close to the Melanesian pygmies than the Andamanese. Next is the Protoastroid. They are characterized by doligocephalic head and markedly platyrine nose, which is depressed at the root, short stretcher, dark brown skin color, wavy or even curly hair. Their limbs are delicate. The forehead is less developed and slightly retreating. They, mark, they have a marked differences from the negrito, negrito in having a wavy hair instead of the frizzy or woolly hair of the latter. This element is found at the Pulayam woman that is of Travancore, Urali of Travancore, Bayaga of Riva, etc. Next is the Mongoloid. The Mongoloids are distinguished by scanty growth of hair on body and face, obliquely set eyes showing epicanthic fold, flat face with prominent cheekbone and straight hair. The Bangalore people entered India probably through the northeastern route in successive wave of migration. The Mongoloid comprises two types namely the paleo Mongoloid and the tibeto Mongoloid. The paleo mangloids has again been subdivided into long-headed type and broad-headed type. Next is the Mediterranean. They comprise three distinct racial type. These are the paleo mediterranean proto egyptian type. Next is the Mediterranean. They are characterized by long head and arched forehead, long face, narrow and prominent nose tall to medium stretcher, light skin color. The probably this type was represented, rep uh, this type was responsible for the building or uh, for the building up of Indus Valley civilization. Next is the Oriental. They were closely resemble the Mediterranean in almost all the characters except the nose which is long and convex in the former. Fifth type is the Western Brachycephaly. They have been divided into three types. The alpinoids, characterized by broad nose with round occiput, prominent nose, medium stretcher, round face, skin color is light, hair on the face and body is abundant, body is thickly set, then dineric. Among these people, the head is broad with rounded occiput and high vault, nose is very long and often convex, stretcher is tall face is long, forehead is receding, skin color is darker, eye and hair are also dark. This type is represented in Bengal, Odisha and Kurg. The Brahmins of Bengal and the, and the Brahmins of Mysore are also some of the representative. Next is Arminoid. In most of the characters, characters the Arminoids show resemblance with the Danerics. In the former, the shape of the occiput is more marked and the nose, nose is more prominent, narrow and esquiline. The Parsis of Bombay show typical Armonoid characteristics. Last one is the Nordics. Their head is long with protruding occiput and arched forehead. They are all 
stretched people live with long face strong jaw and powerfully built body nose is fine narrow and straight complexion is fair eyes often have bluish tinge this element is found sporadically in different parts of northern india especially in the punjab and rajputana the nordics came from the north probably from south east russia and south west siberia through cent uh, through central asia to india so the classification of guha shows that there are six group that is negrito proto australoid mongoloid the mediterranean and the western brachycephaly and the nordic the mongoloid there are three types paleo mongoloid mediterranean and oriental whereas the brachycephaly the Al- albinoids dandric and arminoid classification of ss sarkar according to ss sarkar six ethnic element constitute the main types of the population of india these are the australoid indo-aryan irano scythian mundari speakers far eastern and mongolian the australoid the australoids are known by different names like proto australoid pre-davidian nisada and vedid certain type of south indian like urali kanikkar mala pantran panyan kadar and such other tribes are to some extent preserving the original form of australoids according to sarkar at one time the australoids were widely distributed throughout india and they formed the earliest substrate substratum of the population of india the australoids are short stretched people having dark complexion their head is doligocephalic and nose is platyrrhine their hair is wavy indo aryan the physical type of of the indo aryan is quite distinct from that of australoid the indo aryans are tall in stature lighter in skin color and eye color and even the head hair is not as dark as that of australoid their head is also long but massive their cranial capacity is higher than that of the australoid the whole physique of the indian aryan is most robustly built than the australoid the indo aryans are frequently met with the met with in the indus and the gangetic valley in western india their extension in an almost unbroken broken manner is seen up to the western bihar indo scythian almost all at the same time during the indo aryan migration to india another ethnic element entered from india from south west and that is indo scythian indo scythians are medium statured people their head is mesocephalic and by that they are different from the doligocephalic indo-aryan otherwise the two elements are more or less similar to one another in eastern bihar bengal and assam the long headed indo-aryan element is replaced by the medium headed indo-scythian among the indo-aryan the cephalic index vary around 73 next is mundari speaker The Mundari speaking peoples are confined to the river valley and plateau of eastern central India that is Chota Nagpur Odisha hill and Madhya Pradesh they migrated from the east and they appear to have some sort of affinity with the mongoloids next one is the far eastern it is established fact, fact that from the ancient times india had india had connection with the island of southeast asia cultural relationship continued till historical time therefore some amount of malaya polynesian element is observed in central in certain population of eastern littoral more particularly among the tutikorin tinivali coast in at the extreme south and along the coast of chitgong hill tract sarkar writes that the malayam racial strain is distinct from that uh, the ethnic element mentioned before in having a darker skin color broad to wavy broad uh, broad head hair short stature with tendency to obesity in general last one is mongolian the mongoloids are distributed in north eastern border of india and the foothills of himalayas The skin color of the mongoloid is yellowish hair is sparsely distributed in their face and body they exhibit mongolian eye fold by this and such other criteria the mongoloids are easily distinguishable from the other population of india
this figure explains the classification given by Sarkar. Sarkar has classified the Indian races into six groups and they are called as the Australoids, Indo Aryans, third one is Indo Scythians, fourth one is Mundari speaking, fifth one is Far Eastern, and the sixth one is Mongolian. According to their distribution, they try to highlight or make the distinction or classification in such a manner that they are differing from one another and their origins were also to some extent were differ from another but they were distributed at different part of india in today's world the racial classification is hardly meaningful as the barrier between population no longer exists the gene pool are broken down continuously by the forces of migration genetic drift mutation and selection it also proved that the concept of race has no genetic or scientific basis. When the completion of a draft sequence of the human genome was announced at a June 2000 Rose Garden ceremony, Venter, the president of this ceremony, and Collins, head of the National Human Genome Research Institute, emphasized that their work confined that human genetic diversity cannot be captured by the concept of race and also showed that all humans have genome sequence that are 99.9% .9 identical. Okay, let's try to summarize the important point that we have learned from these modules. The word, word race has been variously trained to trace to the, to the Latin word called ratio or radix and to the have herbio for, for, for head or origin. The first edition of the Oxford English Disc Dictionary volume 8 define, give the definition of race, describe the term as a group of several tribe or people forming a distinct ethnic stock and one of the general great division of mankind having having a certain peculiarity in common race could also be defined anthropologically as a, a population characterized by some concentrations relative as to the frequency and distribution of genes or the physical character which appear fluctuate and often disappear in the course of time by means of geographical and or cultural isolation. Race, could, race could, could also be defined anthropologically as a population described by certain characteristic feature concentrations relative uh, as to the frequency and distribution of genes or physical character which appear or disappear in due course of term evolution by means of geographical regions or by means of cultural isolation. The list of various classification given on the base on the people of India by different scholars were also discussed in this module. Like the, the classification given by Richley, the classification given by Haddon in 1924. Similarly, the well-established classification given by Guha in 1935, later modified and given in 1937. Roy also classified the population of India in 1934 to 38. Sarkar also gave a well-described explanation about the population of India, the racial classification in 1958. Similarly, some other person also who has uh, tried to modify and uh, give the classical classifications of the population of, of, of India. According to the classification of S. Sarkar, he defined the Indian Indian racial group into six groups. He called it as a, as a first one as, as Australoid, second Indo-Aryan, third irano scythian next Mundari speakers, next Far Eastern and the sixth one is Mongolism. So let me give you a last important point regarding, regarding the concept of race. The concept of race has no genetic or scientific basis. When the completion, when the completion of a draft sequence of the human genome was announced at on June 2000 on Rose Garden, Germany, Venter, the president of that particular that uh, Celera Genomics and uh, the Collins, which is the who is the head of the National 
Human Genome Research Institute, they emphasized that their work was confirmed that human genetic diversity cannot be captured by the concept of race and also showed that all human genome sequence that are that are present are 99.9 percent .9 identical so the concept of race is 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 at all not at all a having a scientific explanation for this thank you